What is up, MFers? Hope you guys are having an amazing freaking day. You know, you guys love the tackle making videos, and one of the biggest requests I get is to make a video where I create my own buzz baits and spinner baits from scratch. And so, guess what, guys? You ask and you shall receive. That's what we're doing today. We're making baits that look just like this guy right here. Very custom, very beautiful, and guess what? Very, very cheap. We're gonna use products from Do It Molds and Six Sense Fishing, um, so you can create your very own buzz baits and spinner baits from scratch, and then brighten tomorrow morning we're gonna head out to the local lake and hopefully catch some fish on our creations it's one of the most rewarding things is to catch fish on baits that you create yourself and like i said i think we can get out of there for like under a dollar for each bait i don't know we're gonna have to add it up but uh yeah let's get to pouring get to painting get to adding components show you guys how to do that and then uh get to swamp sticking okay so here's what we got for components we got the mold of course this is a do it Spinner bait mold. This is the spinner jig, which comes in. It looks like one half, three eighth, one quarter, and one eighth. Really, really small size. We've got all different types of. We have willow leaf, really tiny ones. Indiana guys. We got some. Yeah, bigger willow leaves. Ball bearing swivels. We got beads. We got clevises. The only thing we don't have, I think, is spacers, which is totally fine. We'll just add a couple extra beads for that guy. We got a couple different wire frame sizes. Um, so we can make really small ones, we can make big ones, we can do a little bit of anything we want those because we can cut them down too. And we have some really premium, high quality hooks. These are Mustad 32608N, three out and uh, four out size. Also got some powder coat, if we want to powder coat the heads, that's what this guy is for. Uh, lighter and everything. Got the lead making contraption. We're not. We're gonna be lazy today, we're not gonna make our own skirts. We're gonna use these six cents silicone skirts. Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started. I mean, I'm gonna link everything we use for this down below as well And I think we're gonna get out of this for like super super cheap. Just wait. Okay, like I said We can make different sizes. I think let's start with some small ones and So we're gonna use a smaller 3 out size hook. Hopefully you guys can see that good looking little spinnerbait hook This is how the uh, the frames come. So we're gonna put it in the mold Like so and then the mold pours right around that guy. So let me get a couple of these in here. I'm probably not even gonna go with an eighth ounce size to be honest. Like I don't use that small spinner baits like ever. So we're gonna put in some frames for three different sizes. Let's put frames in for three eighth, half, and one quarter. We don't need a ton of these either. I mean, spinner baits go a long ways. We don't need to make seven thousand of them today. Maybe like six. Six would be good. There we go. We got them in our mold. Gonna close this guy down carefully. These are all gonna have to stay. So we might have to do a little bit of adjusting to get them just right to close this down, but I like how that looks. Okay, next step's a success. I got to clamp down really, really good actually, right around those with the mold being completely closed. Should make for a good pour. Let's do it. Okay, pouring went very well. That mold is super easy to pour. We got some long frame ones, five of those, five of the short frame ones. Next step, we're gonna add some powder paint to a couple of the heads. Honestly, it's not a spinner bait, it's not a very natural bait, but we'll add some powder paint. This is glow white, um, just to give it a little bit more pop. And we're also going to, after that, add some, uh, some clevises, some beads, and of course, some blades. I'm excited for that part. Okay, got some uh, some glow white, um, silver still, and I also did some green pumpkin ones because I have a really cool bluegill skirt. Look at this six cents bluegill skirt. Yeah, that's gonna be perfect for a spinnerbait. Next step is the fun part. We get to add some, some clevises, some spacers with the beads, and some blades, of course. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with some of these bigger frame ones because I'm not sure how much these guys can accommodate. If they can put two blades on them, I hope you can. Um, I think you probably can. And then we're gonna put some, uh, some blades on them. Yeah, let's have some fun. Okay, got the old spinner blades built up um, for the most part. Let's see, we have five, six done. And the good thing is, I actually, good and bad, I have a graveyard of old spinner baits that got all rusty. I was able to chop those up and use some of the components. So we have some that are 100% with those, uh, those do it products we had, and some 
that are really niche specific like this guy a half ounce bait short small profile big blades red blade on the front of it um, so we're gonna be able to fish that super super slow uh, and then we got a little tiny stuff uh, like this guy right here more of a finesse bait it's kind of like the war eagle finesse one that's like one of my favorites that guy will be able to fish slow but he's real small light will make that a nice natural color got this guy like we use for the small mouth up north um, yeah that guy's gonna get bit we'll make him really really bright and I mean just a little bit of everything I had a lot of fun putting these together it does take some time but I'm freaking excited let's get some skirts on these I'll show you what kind of cool colors we make Okay, Mappers, we got six spinnerbaits done, skirted and everything. It took, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or so total. Not a terrible amount of time. Look at these guys, though. We got sexy shad color. I did three of them in this, like, white and chartreuse. That's, like, a really tough color for me to beat. But they all three serve different purposes. I'm going to trim this guy way down. It's going to be more of a finesse color. This guy is just going to be a big, blaring, half-ounce, loud, painted blades type guy. And this one's going to be a little bit more natural, but bigger profile. Um, willow blades on both of those silver willow blades that is um these two are gonna be bluegill color ones this guy really cool watermelon gold and then you, you saw this one right here super super natural bluegill color um bright bright orange on the belly bright chartreuse in the belly orange blade up top i mean these are all gonna be really really good baits okay now that we got our spinner baits made up uh real quick let's make up some buzz baits you know buzz baits are even easier to make than spinner baits um you can get your own do it molds mold where you actually pour buzz baits and wire frames like we do the spinner baits or we can cheat and hop into this phase like i'm gonna do right here and just use these pre-made uh pre-painted or not pre-painted we have some unpainted heads as well you can do whatever you want um but yeah we're, let's hop in let's do it right now this does not take that many products we're gonna take our frame right here we're to decide which blade to use uh, we got these black blades um, deciding which blades to use is the biggest thing with the buzz bait depends on what you want your bait to do so if you just use a single blade like this guy this is a pretty good size blade um, for this size um, about perfect size I would say anyways um, but basically what what's gonna be the most important thing is, is how fast you want to pull your buzz bait and how much noise you want it to make because with single blades like this this is a pretty good size one so the bigger the blade the slower you're gonna be able to pull it but I also have these guys which are two-piece blades and I'll show you how they work in a second um, they hook on just like that these guys have four blades on them they make noise clacking together they actually move super super slow as well so we can do either one both are very effective let's make a couple first thing you want to do is take your frame we're gonna take a little tiny bead actually uh, the bigger the bead the better this is the biggest size bead we have we're gonna slide the bead on first the bead is gonna help keep grass and whatever sticks off the blade obviously if your blades fouled up it's not gonna run very well and of course the bead falls right off but we're gonna take this double blade, I'm gonna make a double blade one. Like I said, these guys cause this bait to run super, super slow. We're gonna put it through the top guy of that one. We're gonna take this dude, kind of face him that way too, right behind. So we got through both, get them lined up on the back end, just like so. There we go, those should spin well. And then we're just gonna take a little pop rivet one of these guys right here and we're gonna face it so the smooth end is towards the blade so we're gonna pop that guy on like that and I got a secret to show you guys so you can make your buzz bait squeal a little bit louder um, but yeah all we're gonna do at this point is just bend that guy down so the blade can't come off and we're gonna pinch this rivet down a lot of companies don't do this you can do this with these ones you make yourself um, or you can do it on all your buzz baits that you already have. Either way, when this rivet is pinched down over time from these guys, the blades rubbing against the rivet, it's gonna cause it to rust or it's gonna just cause some friction and that's gonna make it squeal way louder. If you guys throw buzz baits much, you'll know that you'll catch a shite load more fish if you have it really, really squeaky. So we're gonna make it very squeaky because we wanna catch more fish. I know, rocket science, right? We're just gonna do that by pinching that some bitch down. As you can see, Old Mr. Rivet is stuck on there. He's not going anywhere. But we still got good spinach. Like so. Spinach. I always say spinach. All right, we need a, we need a skirt real quick. Let's put a, uh, a bluegill skirt on that guy. Once again, we're going to grab our ultra natural six cents bluegill skirt. You don't need to go too crazy with skirt colors on these guys. Buzz baits. I like white, black, and uh, bluegill colored. Thread them on there like so. Now all we need to do is add a trailer hook and we're done. Boom. That's a badass little buzz bait right there. 
And with those two blades, um, they're actually the smaller size. This is a quarter ounce smaller size head. These two blades that are not connected and they have four prongs between the two of them. They'll clack together and make noise. They'll start squeaking from rubbing on against this pop rivet and they, uh, they're, they're gonna cause a bait to move very, very slow on top of the water, which can be absolutely key, especially if we don't have a lot of wind or anything tomorrow. Okay, MFers, we got like three or four buzz baits made. We got a handful of spinner baits made of all different types of shapes, sizes, colors, and everything. Last step we have to do is go out to the lake and catch them. I'm also gonna share some tips with you guys when we get out there on how to catch fish, what type of rod and reel I like to throw my buzz baits, spinner baits, what type of retrieve, everything so you can catch more fish as well. Catch you guys in the morning. Let's do it. Okay, MFers, welcome to day two, the morning. This is gonna be the testing session out at a beautiful little local lake. I didn't get out quite early enough probably because the sun is high and that is pretty contrary to what works with spinnerbait and buzzbait conditions, which is, you know, low light conditions, a little bit of wind, but the sun hasn't hit all the bank yet. So we're going to go start on the shady bank. Brought my two rods here. Um, got a braid rod, got a other rod that is a spinnerbait rod. I'm going to show you exactly what those actions and lengths are that are my favorite for throwing buzzbaits and spinnerbaits when we get down to the water and uh, yeah, hopefully get things going. Ducks are out, little grass line. It's looking good. Ugh. Gross. Hey, we scared a big bass. That's a good start. We got a lot of algae going on over here. So you can see bank grass. I don't know. Looks pretty good. I'm going to start with some top water. It's always good to start with top water because I like top water. You guys want to see some top water? Okay, I'm going to throw top water. Let's start with a buzz bait. I'm going to start with bluegill pattern. That's just what I tied on. I'm going to fish some of this edge right here. Buzz bait's a great way to cover some water. Hopefully the fish agree and want to kerplow. You know, honestly, I'm not that mad that the water's kind of all messed up and disgusting because um, buzz baits aren't very natural. Neither are spinner baits, so this will actually be pretty solid conditions to throw it. Minus, you know, buzz baits don't come through grass great, but it's part of the struggle. Let's do it. There we go. Yes. Buzzbait fish, get out of there. Oh, that's a decent one too. Right on the grass line. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. He likes the old blue gal buzzing bait. Come here, bud. Yes. That's a daggum start right there. Freaking jacked. I was really nervous. We weren't going to get him. Because, look at that. He freaking slurped it so i was nervous we we're gonna get bit because i didn't think we got out early enough and we have slick calm conditions but hey we're 10 minutes in little three pound guy monster little homemade buzzing bait you bet all right buddy go go swim free get him out from the bank a little bit it's a little shallower right here yes 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 I love top water so freaking much. So, for those of you guys playing at home that want to know what the hell I'm throwing and uh, what I'm throwing it on, I'm throwing this on a seven foot two. This is a medium, I'd say it's more like, I don't know, it fishes a little, it's pretty medium, medium heavy maybe. Um, really fast tip, that's what I throw a buzz bit on. I always throw it on braid. You gotta have floating lines, so that leaves you braid or mono, um, as you guys just saw. I think braid was pretty necessary to get them out of that grass and power them away. But I do like this uh, this lighter tip because a lot of the bites on buzz baits aren't like explosions. They come up and kind of slurp it off the top or they just kind of roll on it because you know it's not a very natural bait, especially on a day like today when we don't got a lot of wind blowing into this grass or anything, which is subsequently when I like to throw a buzz bait. So what I'm saying is braid. Braid, lighter tip rod, 65 pound braid, fast reel, although this buzz bait I made is super, super slow. So you probably could get away with a little bit slower reel, but seven to one gear ratio reel or faster I like to do. It's a daggum setup, guys. Oh yeah. Huh, little dude, just a little guy. Don't even care, okay, okay. That hooked me. Chill. Okay, bye. That guy was in the grass. Not on the line. He was in it. This buzz bait's already starting to squeal. I love it. Oh, God. That guy was pissed off. 
<laughs> He's not even big. Jesus. Freaking took it and ran with it. Clearly thought it was the real thing. I like this supernatural bluegill. So usually when I throw buzz baits, and I almost did it again today. I'll get them back in the water while I'm running my dumb mouth. But almost always throw a black or a white buzz bait. And I was like, you know what? That six cent skirt is super, super natural. And it's kind of bright. It stands out a little bit. So it really gives them a good target. Every fish I've caught has been on the main hook, not the trailer. There we go. That guy freaking slurped it too. That was like the lightest bite ever. But I'll take it. Man, look, how many times has that dude been caught? His jaw, he's like, came up and slurped that. He's like, man, I've seen this. I've done this game before. <laughs> but I'm going to do it again because that thing looks too sexy. I can't resist it. Long fish. Skinny, long guy. Probably an 18 inch fish, 19 inch fish, only a two pounder though, but. Oh man, got to finesse them. I actually saw that guy swirl on my buzz bait like three times. Just came up, touched it, didn't want to eat it. And I switched angles a little bit and I just started really slowly pulsing my buzz bait. And that's a tip I guess I can give you guys, just a tip for the day. It's going to be on your buzz bait retrieve. If it's slick calm like it is right now and you're fishing slow, you're fishing grasslands, I don't like a, a super fast straight retrieve. I like to, you know, kind of pulse that buzz bait, give it a little squeal, make that that skirt flare a little bit. You can fish it even slower when you do that. You can kind of just wiggle your rod tip. That'll keep that bait in the strike zone longer. It keeps it in front of that fish's face. I don't think they're like really super aggressively chewing in slick calm conditions with the sun on this water right now. So I'm definitely trying to maximize these little pockets in the grass by just twitching it really lightly. Same with the grass edge. Do that, and get some more bites. Just spin, just tip, face. Got him, oh! Oh, he did not want it either. We just made him eat it. <laughs> that was cool. How he bit, rolled on it, and then came back and just had to come up and touch it. That's one thing you always gotta keep in mind, bats don't have hands. And they're very curious, so they a lot of times they will come up and touch it. Just touch your bait. So if you ever feel like, you're like, man, I don't know, that could have been a bite. Usually it is. Usually one touched it, looked at it, rubbed against it. Don't be afraid to set the hook or throw back in there. Yep. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It's either big or he's in grass. I think he's in grass. God, another one that just came up and slurped it. Yeah, he's not that small. Come here, bud. Sick. Another, I don't know, a couple pounder with a couple pounds of salad on him. <laughs> yep, my bait's in there somewhere. Once again, we got him with the regular hook. Didn't have to get him with the trailer, but we did get him with the trailer too. Not giants, but um, definitely cool catching them on baits we just made. Thought this buzz bait bite was dead. I hadn't had a bite in like a half an hour. I was just about to switch up to the spinner bait. I think we're going to do that here shortly now that the sun's up a little bit higher. Fish some of these weed edges with those homemade spinner blades. This is sick though. Well, it seems that the buzzbait bite has slowed quite a bit. The fish just don't want to come up and eat anything. I think they moved a little bit further off, but cannot complain with it. We caught, I don't know, a handful of fish, a couple decent ones, a couple really small ones, but regardless, we went out this morning, got a late start a little bit later than I wanted to, and we still caught fish on the grass lines on our homemade buzzbait. And now it's time to try the old spinnerbait, see if we can get bit. I was thinking about which color, which blade combination I want to put on. And since it is pretty slick calm, I don't think I need to make a lot of ruckus. So I thought maybe willow blades. And I was going to put a shad color on, but I'm like, there's tons of bluegill in this lake. They're eating the bluegill colored buzzbait. It'd be stupid not to try a, a bluegill pattern. So we're going to try this one. This is the uh, the bluegill uh, six cents jig skirt. I'm not sure what the name of the color is. I'll link it right down below. Pretty good sized blades on them though. We got a silo, silo, a silver willow, a little tiny one, and then a big willow, um, a big gold willow. So this guy I think is going to be absolutely freaking money. We got a little bit of breeze coming in on the grass line right here. We just switched areas of the lake. Um, 
good depth out there. Kind of a shallow flat over on this end where the, the weed edge is. But yeah, let's get to chucking and hopefully catch some fish on our homemade spinnerbait just as well as we did on the buzzbait. All right, here's our spinnerbait combination. Just threw a trailer hook on here. Pro tip for you guys, if you don't have the, uh, the spinnerbait trailer hook, um, the little plastic part, you can actually use a piece of plastic fishing lure or really any piece of plastic holds it on there. Just, just nicely, really nice like. Let's see how this guy looks in the water. I'll probably catch one, just test swimming it. Oh yeah, that looks good. That big blade allows you, even though it's a willow, to fish it pretty slow without making too much of a drag in the water. This is my uh, my rod and reel. I like to throw my spinner baits on. It's a 7.4 medium heavy. Um, I throw it on fluorocarbon, different than uh, the top water, of course. But I like the way fluorocarbon fish is. It's got less stretch than mono, but uh, it stays down, unlike braid. A little bit more forgiving than braid, of course. I think it's 17 pound on this rod. Anything bigger than 15, 15 to 20 is great for a spinnerbait. That's what we got on here. Seven to one gear ratio reel, really with the spinnerbait. You can fish it really, really slow. Slow rowing is great all times of the year. This is a pretty shallow lake on the grass edge where we're fishing anyway, so seven to one is pretty solid, pretty tough to beat. There we go. moved areas over to some duck weeds got ourselves another buzzbait fish i wanted to the buzzbait fish because we switched spots and hey who doesn't like a topwater fish and look at that we got one. Oh god freaking destroyed the spinnerbait i don't know how we didn't get the bait or the trailer hook but just freaking erupted on it right on top of the water right below the top of the water i guess damn there we go oh that's a good one okay what did we do here we got a big we got ourselves a big or at least he doesn't know the drill and he's fighting way harder than he should <laughs> yes so sick that is what is up right there. Nice little three and a half pounder. Homemade spinner blade. He seriously has hit this thing like four times and he's out of his damn mind. He actually took the uh, trailer hook, stole it. Maybe that's why he didn't get hooked. Sick though. I think they like the bluegill color. I'll take it. Well, not a giant giant like he seemed like when he fought and bit four times but totally badass fish back here in this scummy beautiful looking spot that i just found never have fished in this little spot before i think i may be back yeah i'll come back <laughs> ew he wanted to steal it from me at my feet they do in fact like the spinner blade i think we did a good job making them Oh, God. Oh, these fish are out of their minds. You'd think once they felt that uh, not-so-natural wire in his face, he wouldn't bite again, but he did. Yes, sir. Look at this little Gillian snatcher right here. Fat guy. Stout little dude. Little buggered tail action. Sweet right at my feet. That's what I'm talking about. Another one, another one. They're loaded in here. Yes. Come here, bud. They're all kind of basics. Little two pound guys. But I think they're eating well. And they're definitely loaded in here. Old Mr. Spinnerbait is the deal. I'm getting bit almost every cast. I'm not hating this. Nope. I don't hate it. Another one. Another one. Oh man, they freaking love this spinnerbait back here. The good thing is like there's a bunch of milfoil and stuff below the surface. You can't see that, but this is just duckweed on top. And so the spinnerbait rides right below the surface. And these guys can just sit there and pick off whatever bluegill or whatever comes by. That's a really good bait to throw through there. 
Okay guys, finally off the water. Caught a bunch of fish on both the spinnerbait and the buzzbait. Totally badass, I was stoked about that. Um, hopefully this video showed you guys how cheap it is to actually go and make these products yourself. It's, it's way, way cheaper if you're on a budget or whatever. You can buy in at any step in the process. You can get already finished molded heads finish skirts or you can start totally from scratch you can do it either way i'll link what i use down in the uh, the description from do it and six cents fishing both those companies support the channel so please hit the link down below and go support those two companies and uh yeah hopefully you guys learned a few things about spinnerbait and buzzbait fishing as well along the way be sure to drop a comment down below let me know if you guys want to see more bank fishing and more diy type tackle making videos and i will catch you guys very soon